Welcome back, everybody. Today is another episode of Educational Smurf Lobby, where we've gone a bit higher with the enemy team having an average of 4,400 MMR on the dire side and my team having an average of 4160 on the Radiant side. And today I'll be playing position three Legion Commander, really highlighting what is wrong with players in the 4K bracket, what you guys are missing, and what exactly it takes to climb out of this trench of players that know a lot about Dota. They're pretty good at this point, but it's the decision-making and the speed at which they adjust to things happening in the game that I'm gonna highlight today, because that's what I feel like they lack, and you're gonna see a lot of it in this game. Let's go ahead and get started. So we loaded into the game, and the enemy team is five man in our triangle right now. My team said they didn't want to fight them. And we know they're there because of the watcher. So in this particular case, we're just going to, you know, def block the wave from tier three because of that. Uh, my starting items, it's really important to note that I'm against Void. And it's a melee matchup with a lot of trading and just a lot of CSing. Neither of us can really prevent the other one from CSing with anything other than just out timing them with the deny, right? We don't have stuns. We don't have really strong ways of bullying the other. It's like, I'll use overwhelming odds, heal time walk, and then we're just going to right click each other. So that means that I go for the max damage. And since Void's also not the strongest level one, I don't need tangos right away. So I maxed out on damage and I bought this fairy fire because against Witch Doctor, Maledict does damage based on the amount of HP that you had, not percentage, but the number when they use Maledict on you. So fairy fire, which gives you 85 health back, negates a lot of Maledict ticks in the early levels compared to that 85 health. Like it's actually like more like 200 HP, something like this. So. What's interesting about that is I thought about that, right? And then we look at Void's items, and he I feel like he didn't think about that. He didn't think that he's primarily trading with me. If I were him, I'd have slippers and a branch rather than this the stick because the way we're playing the lane, like, what would he rather have? Four damage or get one stick charge every time I push Q? It's just specific to certain matchups, right? So one cool thing I do here purposely is get this creep about one-third HP, and then I walk up to the range, and I'm basically saying, I'm going to nuke this both at the same time, and he walks back up. If he hadn't walked back up, I'd just kill the creeps. But he walks back up, so I use the nuke, making him time walk. A little bit of a weird time walk for him. So we get some good trade. And right here is where the trade's over. You see that? Right here is where we're done. But Tree, being a 4K player, chases just a little bit too far. Ends up taking 200 damage for free from the Witch Doctor. So something that's really cool here is that Overwhelming Odds just came off cooldown. And I know it's 15 seconds. And I know that time walk is 24 seconds. So... Because Time Walk is still on cooldown, I purposely use my nuke right away, getting really high value harass on this void. So if he had thought ahead, he would know that Time Walk is a longer cooldown than Overwhelming Odds, and he would have defensively aggroed and done all he could to avoid taking that Overwhelming Odds during the eight seconds that his Time Walk's still on cooldown. So another favorable trade for me. Not as much worried about the CS because of the fact that I saw such a good opportunity to get a good trade. And even though I gave up a range creep for that, like I didn't get the range creep last hit, um, that's the kind of stuff that you have to be able to make the judgment call on. And because they're both level one, I'm allowed to play super aggressive under tower like this. I know they don't have Maledict yet. Void's busy CSing. Accidentally taking some tower aggro there. But you can see that it's not that bad to push it into the carry level one because uh, I can just mess with all their CS. And uh, if I so I don't mind like using a nuke to win the trades that way. So. Now that I have my passive, I'm going to look to try to proc it with creeps hitting me as often as possible. Really giving as few free CS um, uncontested to the void as possible, as you see there. So because it was only Witch Doctor, I wanted to get like a little bit of uh, aggression on him there. As you see there, I do try to do the Bracer drop for Fairy Fire um, to mitigate a lot of that damage. Always trying to get those Moment of Courage procs when I can. So now we're going to try to get the lane near my tower. And we're going to try to do the whole defensive aggro into our range creep play. So we're going to use the mid laner for global aggro. But we managed to mess it up a little bit. And the melee creep doesn't get onto the range. So something important to note is this is a really awkward moment. Because I know the Lotus is up. And I should have thought about that earlier. If this was 215, it would have been really good to be doing exactly what I did, dragging to the range. But because it's the Lotus, I definitely should have kept the lane right here, dragged to the range like right here, and then gone and picked up the Lotus and come back. But now the distance between that and this is so far that I'm giving up 80 gold, which honestly might even be worth it. But I elected to go for the 80 gold and the Witch Doctor sniped the Lotus. So a bit of a misplay coming out there. 
And since Tree wasn't quite here yet, I just made sure I used my nuke to push in the wave. But now he shows up and I think, oh, I can get a few right clicks off because of the fact that they used Malik on him instead of me. So I went for the Blade of Attack before any other components of Phase Boots for the exact reason that I went the Bracer and the stat items. I'm trading a lot with Void. I'm hitting Void a lot. And I'm just trying to make sure I out CS him. Um, in a lane where I'm more worried about dying to like chase potential, I might go for the Boots. In a lane where I'm trading a lot, but maybe he's winning the trades and I'm more fearful of his trades rather than trying to amp up the aggression of my trades, I would go for the Chainmail. And... Something about going phase boots now in the current meta as offlane, I find to be really important. I feel like around the time you get your phase boots or like Vanguard or Blade Mail, there's a lot of skirmishes happening. You know, random four position showing up to your lane, potential mid showing up to your lane, probably not in Alina mid game, like the opponent mid's not showing up. But the idea is that I feel like picking and choosing your engagements right now is so important and there's so much early action that I would rather have the movement speed and mobility of the phase boots on a lot of offlaners first before going for like the bigger item. That's much more about like a 7.34 D kind of thing. So I use my Q to get an efficient harass on the Witch Doctor there. I also thought it would help secure um, the positioning for the Flag Bearer creep, but I missed it. So in this case, you see me actually try to use the global aggro um, on the portrait, but apparently it still doesn't work with Quick Attack. You know, I'd like them to fix this bug. Um, so it didn't work. But I end up managing to do it correctly this time anyways. Getting the range creep denied. This is a really important thing to do if you're newer to the offlane or you are somehow 6k and you don't do this. It's so easy and just so important. Just denies a free range creep. Keeps the lane near your tower as well. Allows you to play like aggressively like this without super pushing the lane. Treant with a really nice position Q. And it just sets us up for really good aggression. And while we were being aggressive, we only missed like two creeps. And if we had let the range creep live, we would actually miss a lot more creeps. So in this case, because I got EMP'd by a support invoker, I fly myself out a mango when I finish my phase boots. And also, this is something I really want to highlight about 4k players. I think it's pretty default to take your W at level 4. But in this case, I got EMP'd and I just have no mana. And I'm also not really afraid of dying. I'm like pretty strong in this lane. So I'm not worried about like falling behind, not having enough levels to eventually get my W. So I just take my E second point because I know I don't have mana for both spells. And I think if I had had like half mana or more against like EMP or sorry, against like cold snap, um, I probably would have taken W at level four. But situational adjustments, very important. Drop my bracer to use the mango. Honestly, could have dropped my my branches as well, but I didn't. So since my tree is gone, notice how I'm playing really defensively. Uh, just just defensively aggroing. Really only playing aggressive based on where my supports are. So I saw Witch Doctor walk past me, and I also know that Trance showing bottom here. So he knows that my Trance not here. So I know that the Wisdom Rune's coming out. So we have a little bit of a quick click war here, but he ends up getting it. But I get the cleanup kill, so could be worse, but not ideal since they got both Wisdom Runes. So I finished the wand because there seems to be a lot of skirmishing going on. I do that before the blade mail. And I originally queued up the chain mail there you saw, but I'm like, I just, I'm not really dying. So I'm actually going to save for the broadsword. Really bad CSing here, Brian. Watching yourself is pathetic. So we're going to push in the lane because we're level six and our tree is like somewhat nearby and we just want to be a bit aggressive. So I'm kind of just walking at this void, fucking with him a little bit. And we end up having Alina hasted run to top lane and have a really nice kill, which the kill on Treant uh, gives the void level six, which is the reason why I felt safe to be there in the first place was because he wasn't six. So a bit of an unfortunate occurrence there. But here's where the 4K players show themselves. So what happens is the opponent haste top and TP's mid on their mid. So they used a lot of resources in Lina's off the map for like 50 seconds. Faces Void used Chronosphere. Both supports showed top. They used a ton of resources and killed me. And I am now respawning. So they don't have resources for bottom and I'm respawning. So what do I want to do as a level six Legion that just got killed when the opponent used all their resources top? I want to go bottom. And so Viper should have the spidey sense enough to know that at the very least he should back off until he sees me top. He needs to be proven to him that I am not bottom because of all the reasons I just listed. But he sticks around, so easy first duel of the game. Thank you, Viper. 
And we're going to try to get the Invoker here, but because of the portals being just absolutely broken, we're just going to miss the gank and go right back to the lane that we would have liked to TP to anyways, looking to finish our blade mail. No reason to chill around with a team for too long. We don't have duel anymore. And we don't want to give Void free farm when he doesn't have Chronosphere. So, back to the running at Void. In this particular instance, I don't have duel for 15 seconds. I was kind of like, I don't know what's going on here. This is like one of those situations where anytime you're not super strong, just play within your limits. So I'm strong in the sense that I have a lot of HP and I'm pretty farmed, but I'm not strong that because I can't do anything, <laughs> you know? So when I have somebody gank for me like this, I'm not going to judge the gank. I'm not going to be like, this is a bad gank. I'm just going to play within the limits of my hero and kind of let this guy do his thing, you know? So I'm just chasing. Looks like we're going to force some reactions. We've now suddenly got like some three on three where I don't have duel yet. Kind of unfortunate. And so I'm just kind of walking at people. Nothing fancy. I've got duel now. But then we're going to suddenly see a Lena TP. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about this one. I don't really want to force this under tower. So I back off. And the Dazzle's going to manage to get caught. And I'll be honest. I know this is a viewer lobby with people who are part of my community. But I, I believe that most 4K Legion commanders right there, maybe even AK, 9K Legion commanders, would ping the fucking Dazzle and say, what are you doing in my lane? I didn't have a duel yet. And there's just something about the mindset of playing to the limits of your hero and making sure that I didn't force a duel, you know? It would be atrociously bad if I tried to duel that Witch Doctor, chased him around the tower, got him, and then got stunned by Lena and died, right? And fed a duel win or something. That would just be like an absolute disaster. But Dazzle, not a good that he dies, our mid laner dies, right? But at the end of the day, like, the Invoker tries to look for more, and we get a kill off of it, and we played within our limits. So, it is what it is. We aren't judging our teammates, we're just kind of playing. You know, new vision and uh, composure BSJ. So... This is another moment we're going to highlight being a real 4K special. <laughs> so I have no duel for 35 seconds. I have two supports that are level five and a half approximately. And there's a wave mid to be available. So these are all reasons that add up to no reason to be with me because I don't have duel and we don't have our ultimates. And so we talk about efficiency for carries a lot. You know, people think of CS per, like gold per minute and all that kind of stuff, but it's equally important to be efficient on supports. So a lot of supporting efficiency regard comes down to being around your cores when they want you to be there. Meaning like I have blink, I have blade mail, I have dual, like any of this stuff, like I'm powerful for some reason. So I want you to be there. And then on top of that, hitting your power spikes as a support, making sure you hit your crucial, like small items and your level timings, like level six. So these moments where my supports are just sitting behind me with a wave mid really highlights like the 4k bracket. I feel like you either have supports that are like not supporting and jungling. <laughs> and then you have supports like this that are like over supporting. Both extremes are not good. So, you know, I like, you know, it's a good attitude they have, you know, I'm like, yeah, thanks for the support guys. You're sitting behind me, but go the fuck mid and get your level six. So because of this, I'm in the game. I'm thinking like, this is a bit awkward, you know? Uh, I don't like this. I'm just not gonna hit the tower or anything. I'm just gonna jungle some creeps. Same idea as the Dazzle when he got here. I like, I'm just gonna be cautiously assisting. I'm gonna be around. I don't want to leave this area. This is where I want to be, but I'm just gonna keep sitting here. But since I'm like, I don't like this. And now that I've got blade mail and duel is up, I don't want to just walk at this tower. Like we've been doing for the last minute and a half. Let's get out of here tree and make a smoke. You know, that's what I said to him in the game. It's just, this is the replay. So you don't see it. So I'm going to walk all the way mid. I know Lena's a nice blade mail kill. Pretty much any ranged damage dealer without mobility that can't get away from you is really nice to duel. So we have a quick rotation to this level 10 Lena who's been owning us top. And this is like a game-changing kill, you know. We were only up by 1k after a really nice ganks from Lena. And now, suddenly, this level 10 Lena feeds dual damage to me. And I'm just going to walk right back top, right? Back to where we were, back to home base. So you may be thinking, BSJ, you have a Meepo carry. <laughs> And let me tell you guys, during this game itself, I recognized it at the very start, but I don't know too much about Meepo Carry. And I also think, you know, we talked about this like judgmental stuff that people do in the 4K bracket. I haven't thought about the Meepo Carry a single time since the beginning. You know, I was like, oh, I have a Meepo. That's basically it. I'm like, I know this guy likes Aegis's. It seems like it might work pretty well with Dazzle because of the AoE heal um, and the minus armor that amps up Meepo's damage. But aside from that, like, I really do think a large portion of offlaners would have it in their back of their head, like, why do I have a fucking Meepo carry? Why the fuck did my teammate pick Meepo carry? 
And this is just the kind of stuff that I think is so prevalent at like 4K and above, like all the way to my bracket that is just so toxic, not to your teammates only, but to you. It just distracts you. It makes you not accountable for your own actions. And I, I just want to take this video as a platform to say like, if you do that, you know, just work on your awareness that you shouldn't do that. And it doesn't help anybody. So, um... So let's rewind real quick. So in this case, I went back to top and I knew they had Void Chrono again and they also had Witch Doctor ulti. So I'm playing very passively, right? I'm playing like I purposely defensively aggroed. I only was willing to walk forward here because my tree was coming by. And notice how I was like very cautious, backed up, dodged the ultimate combo, and it ends up getting tanked by tree. Which to be honest, like since my duel is now up, perfect timing just right before this guy finishes TP to get home. Uh, a little bit of optimistic TP from him. He probably could have walked further away. But, like, they use two big ultimates that easily could kill me. And it's absolutely essential that I don't die again since I'm snowballing despite that one death. And so, that that bit of cautiousness that led to my tree feeding and then me getting the kill on the... When I say my tree fed, I, I, his death was good. But my tree dying and me getting the kill instead, absolutely essential for, like, offlane heroes to just snowball momentum in the game. So, I saw the invoker walking through a ward here. Um, so I was here to help my tree since, uh, you know, not much else to do right now. Other than, like, I could take the tower, but I knew I had my blink coming and duel was coming up online as well. So I pinged the tree saying, don't kill him yet. I almost have duel. So another duel win, 58 damage. He was going for our wisdom rune. It's like a pretty smart rotation from him, but he, he was walking through a ward without ghost walk on. So that was a bit newbie. So because nobody was showing until this Lena just showed mid, I chose to back off and be careful there. Um, instead of using like the press the moment of courage on the creeps to get a lot of tower damage and notice how the invoker TP'd in invoker alone is not very scary to me but I also don't have duel for 14 seconds and if a support invoker TP's behind me aggressively I have to assume he's not alone like I have to assume that this guy isn't just bad and trying to be aggressive 1v1 against a blade mail legion who's a core and he's a support so I assume he's got help so I back off um, Witch Doctor had ended up TPing, but now we finally see the Witch Doctor. And this is the exact same principle that we had earlier, where we died to the gank. A bunch of resources, Invoker and Witch Doctor TP top. And look at that juicy Viper bottom, same thing, right? So this Viper could know that he pushed that creep wave and his two teammates showed top. So a lot of information given. This is the kind of stuff that actually matters a lot when it comes to decision making of the opponent. If he's thinking about what I see, he knows that I know he's alone. Who's a better target than a guy that's alone for a Blade Mail Legion? So he would ideally clear this creep wave and back off this one right here. Like I promise you like a 12K Viper would just back off here. But the 4K Viper, not so much. We're gonna get the free win. And emphasis, we're not trying to flame. We're just showing you guys the difference, right? These are the things that I know wouldn't be free kills in my bracket. So every time we don't have duel, we're just trying to do like maintenance things on the map, take towers, clean up waves. It's really important to note that I don't want to show on waves when I have duel. And I don't particularly mind showing on waves if I have if I don't have duel, as long as I don't think I'm gonna die. Right? Um, so we have a shit ton of dual damage at this point. 76. That's a shit ton for 16 minutes into the game. We don't mind showing because we don't have dual. And we're going to run back to top. And even though we do have dual, um, we, we would have shown on this wave. But since we have a teammate that was coming, we decided not to. It's important to note that I will only show on the wave if I know the wave needs to be pushed and nobody else is pushing it. It's super essential that you don't show on the wave if not necessary. That information that we're talking about Viper being able to use um, is so essential that we don't give them the information when we don't have to. So we have five heroes here. And this is just a situation where like, I'm really strong and we have five heroes. So let's make use of it. So I play around the ward that we have. I'll take any kill I can get. I'm going to walk towards the ward. Which doctor looks like he might be trying to deward, And another free kill for us here. We see a TP and we're going to back off and go back towards mid in terms of maintenance. Because we used our duel and we're showing on mid, 
We told our teammates to be careful here. I just communicated like, hey guys, I'm showing on mid, don't have duel. And we're just gonna do the whole jungling thing. So in a lot of games, you know, I'd go for like a Shadow Blade or a BKB. These are items that do a specific thing for me. You know, BKB lets me go in in team fights and not really die to all their damage. Shadow Blade lets me like hunt relentlessly on the map. But I wanted to just keep accelerating my farm and be able to stay on map. That was really my idea here. Accelerate my farm stay on map and the further ahead you are you can generally go for more luxurious items that don't accomplish a specific thing but make you do what you're doing already better so we went for the echo saber a rare purchase for me but i also thought that the harpoon would come in handy later against these like ranged cores that position away from me and kite me pretty well so that was the idea behind the item purchase and so notice the immediate like shift that is going to happen in this game the opponent starts playing together a shit ton i'm sure that if the opponent keeps splitting up we're going to win this game for free like let's be honest if you're playing a hero like legion and the opponent just keeps giving you solo pickoffs you're just going to win right <laughs> so there's no reason to worry about exactly what we would do if that happens because it's pretty obvious we pick up the people off when they show in three different lanes but now we get to this game state that's really awkward for a hero like legion because they're grouping up and they proceed to group up pretty much for the rest of the game. They're absolutely terrified of me. And what's so important about this that I'm bringing up to you guys is that I know exactly why they're terrified. It's easier for me than the rest of my team to know why they're grouped up because it's my hero that's making them group up. It's my hero that they're so afraid of walking out on the map by themselves against that I'm dictating the pace of the game right now. So this is something where if I'm aware that my hero is having impact on the way the opponent is playing the game, I will usually communicate that. I'll usually say something like, hey guys, we're like, I, I eventually communicate this like two or three minutes later where I say, hey guys, we don't want to group up. They're always grouped up because of me. They're terrified. Look for pickoffs in the side lanes. You know, that's what I ended up communicating. And it took me a little while to do that. Honestly, like as soon as they start grouping up, I would be a better communicator if I said that right away. It took me like two or three minutes, but it's something to think about when it comes to your communication as a core. So I wanted this lane to be pushed because even though my Shadow Shaman's like off map trying to be stealthy, we had just seen four heroes here. So nobody's going to be here. We just need to push the wave. So I walk up and this is like one of those rare circumstances where they were all showing. I'm not really concerned about them doing anything. So I just show bottom. Get a little bit of ancient farm. So I'm just chilling. Nothing to really do right now. Going to cut the wave. Note that I, I know it's really important that me showing, and I usually communicate on a hero like Legion, like, hey guys, I'm showing. And I would like one of my teammates to get this farm, to be honest. But now, because I take it, we lost presence in the bottom half of the map. I don't want to be there alone anyways. And then now we're just like five here. And this is like one of those moments where I was like, I realized I had to say something to my team because I'm like, why are we five here? Uh, we're, you know, we're up by 6K and we have like Shadow Shaman pick off, Treant pick off legion pick off and it's most notable that they have void invoker lena you know like witch doctor they have like a huge wombo combo of team fight spells so it doesn't make sense really for us to be five manning so in this case i was like okay let's five man for like an objective you know that's like the only reason we would uh, we would five man and i know we have ages for meepo ideally um but since it's already 1930 i'm like let's smoke to bottom go through the portal and try to find a kill and use shadow shaman wards so it's important to note that I had 90 dual damage like four minutes ago, and I just haven't gotten any more. I broke my smoke, and this Meepo is nuts, by the way. During this game, I cannot believe that we have no vision. We saw like three or four heroes bottom, and he's just blinking the fuck in. Like, I, I think if the opponent was a bit better, they would just have a ward here and kill this guy. You know, his team's all the way back here. And so this is like way overzealous by my Meepo, and exactly like how you would just lose the game. So I'm like, hey guys, chill the fuck out. Chill, chill, chill. Like, look how far back I'm playing. Like, I can't believe my team's so excited to fight. Like, I don't want the five man. And this is, keep in mind, before I have communicated that I don't, that what's happening in the game. You know, everything I told you guys about the dynamic of the game that I recognized, I hadn't told my team that yet. So it's like understandable, but you can see like I eventually have to tell them because I'm like, ah, I don't, you know, <laughs> you know, all the stuff that I felt like awkwardness when my teammates were sitting behind me at 10 minutes, it's like amplified now. Because, like, this is where, a, you know, a bad team fight could just turn the game immediately. And we have to avoid that at all costs. So my Beepo wasn't even there for, th for the Roche. So I'm like, I guess I'll take the Roche. Um, notice how I'm purposely not showing on the creep wave here when my teammates can. Um, even though I want the farm. I saw Invoker, but I also, like, 
if he proceeds to stick around, I don't want to duel him because he wouldn't stick around if he was alone, right? So we're just going to use this time to be a bit efficient off map. Uh, like I said, the opponent has proven that they are going to sit together for like ever. So I am just farming off map. It is so important as Legion in this case that if I'm going to farm, it is off map. It is so important that I walk away from my team, meaning I don't TP so that I can be available to my team, but I walk away, farm off map, don't give the opponent any openings, don't show them that I TP, don't ever TP, be available to help your team, but I'm aware of this five-man dynamic and I've now communicated play side lanes, look for pickoffs. I have now communicated this. I think it was right here, actually. You see me pause. Yeah, I was typing it right there. And that's part of why I go Shadowblade, right? Is I probably would have gone BKB if the opponent wasn't always sitting as five, but we could get like a 5v4, like a 5v3. And I'd be like, oh, let's like, I'm going to get a duel on like Void where it's like three of them camping and then we're going to win the fight that way. But now I don't even want to fight them because we just don't have to. And they've been sitting as five forever. So I just want to get more farm than they do. So Shadow Blade means like play for farm. Like we don't have to fight them. Just look for pickoffs. I'm reluctantly showing on the wave. But after I show on that wave, notice how I'm actually going to use that information to my advantage. I show on that wave, instantly TP mid and Shadow Blade to find this void. So sometimes you can actually purposely give information or use advantage that you had to give in that case um, to get pickoffs. And that's just like a really fast decision. And I want you guys to know that this information aspect that I've been highlighting throughout the entire duration of this video is truly what I think like 4K, 5Ks, and 6Ks are lacking. And I think it's like something that to get to 5k 4ks have to do this and to get to 6k 5ks have to do this like 6ks are better at it but they still lack you know and it's really how you continue growing um in mmr so we're going to take that one kill and even though i said we don't want a five man fight them that's the whole point is we don't want a five man fight them we want to fight them because we're ahead but we don't want a five man so their crucial team fight spell chronosphere was down and suddenly they're just bleeding left and right and this is something where if we had one fight that we took into them and they chronoed us and like killed three of us and took the Aegis, this game's upside down, right? It's about even, one to 2k, and instead we get one crucial kill, waiting, for, waiting, 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 looking for that crucial opportunity, and now it's 11k. So the same concept applies. They can't split anymore, and I want to keep doing the same plan, but now I want to be able to connect to my team more around the map and I'm super rich, so I just go bots. My teammates probably knew it was me after they saw the double boot build because, you know, BSJ doesn't hesitate to take a second boot. So in this example, I told my team, guys, I'm showing top careful. I said this to them because I see them in the enemy triangle and I'm killing like 12 creeps and the opponent should theoretically jump at this opportunity. I would not have shown here if the Void had Chronosphere. I want to make that very clear. Like, if the opponent was at their peak strength for teamfights, I would not show here. Because then they could absolutely dumpster punish my teammates, right? They could just own them, right? So I'm going to make my way towards my team after telling them to be a bit careful. Like, I'm going to farm my way towards them. But, you know, they're still holding their position. I'm a bit nervous. I'm like, guys, I'm a bit scared for you here. So I'm going to keep walking towards them. I'm looking for the Lena that might go top. I'm, con I'm constantly lurking, you know? And I'm like, okay, well, now the team fight that I didn't really want to break out is happening. We don't have any vision. This just feels really awkward because we have no vision. And so my Meepo, who clearly, you know, has the gene for risk aversion, is uh, non-existent with this man. Respect. So, not the end of the world. I mean, it's not good, but we fed two kills. I'm just going to keep playing off map. This is a situation where, like, I just don't see a reason to run into their triangle as five. Like, I just don't see it, right, when they are sitting there as five. I'm constantly like, they don't want to split up. The second they split up, I will kill them. And, like, if you wait long enough and you out-farm them while they're sitting as five, they will eventually feel pressure to split up. So, in this case, Vipers, you know, teasing a little bit. At this specific point in the game, I actually told my Treant to stop camping around me. I said, I have boots of travel. I can connect anywhere. We don't have to be sitting with me. And we have a lot of wards, so I'm not really worried about dying. But he decides to stick around mainly. Um, and it's going to honestly pay off. 
because the opponent is going to walk through our wards at some point here. And notice how I'm just still being cautious. Trion sticks around. Meepo comes top. And we see the Invoker. Actually, no, we didn't see the Invoker. We see Lina. So we see Lina. We know they're here. Trion broke the smoke. I'm, like, looking to, to snipe somebody in the back. Look at my pathing here. I know the fight's kind of breaking out here. This is what the Shadow Blade allows me to do, right? So I see Witch Doctor. He was a little bit slow with the Glimmer. It's tough timing there. And the Dazzle gets to save the Meepo for a really long time. And he uses Dig. So they honestly really bad targeting by the opponent and then really good targeting by us. Like I wipe out the support in the back and their cores that deal a bunch of damage didn't focus on Dazzle. Like if they just focus Dazzle, they, they can win the fight, right? Or at least kill him and maybe kill Meepo afterwards. So ends up working out and getting a lot of tower damage here. My teammates are getting tower damage top. And this is a situation where it's better to just be efficient and hold map control than it is to force tier three and group up and push. Because first off, Shadow Shaman used wards on bottom. He wasn't even here. So maybe if he was top, that might be a different story. But also because Roche is spawning in the next like two to five minutes. So because if we are like at the tail end of our ages, we should absolutely barrel down a lane there and just take a Rax. But because we still have things to play for and we can just keep all three lanes pushed in and it's really difficult for the enemy to ever get back out on the map to ensure victory at these points it's just so reliable to do this which is to just push all three lanes in and play off map right when they're alive so now i just place for some efficiency for that exact reason the opponent's terrified as long as i don't show so i go for the harpoon because once again i can just keep postponing this bkb because of how far ahead we are in this game and so we i know that the what happened here is i was gonna go on the void but my tree walked through the sentry that i knew was there earlier so the void knew we were coming so this is an important dynamic i know that they know we're here so i tp bottom thinking that maybe they're gonna make a move somewhere else or maybe they're gonna feel free to split push because they know we're top so in this case that information that I knew that they were going to make a move and I decided to camp a wave is the exact information that Meepo did not use and he pushed the creep wave in vision and gets picked off. So like, it would be equally bad for me to have TP'd bottom and just farmed this creep wave before they showed. So this like whole dynamic of information, I hope has been a bit of an eye opener for the people watching because I guess the best explanation I can give is during the game, like, I, I was like, I can't believe my Meepo is showing here. You know, I can't believe that guy's doing this. Like, you know, it's just, it's a matter of, this is information that I know to process and I've, and I've made these mistakes before. So really learning from this informational aspect, if there's one takeaway you guys get from this video, it would be that. And so even though Meepo's dead, I think Lena is by far the most important hero. And I knew Void wasn't right there. So I'm not going to get Chronosphere during the duel. And so, I know I'm also super fucking strong. So we end up wiping them anyways without the Meepo. And so, same thing here is we've got to get all three lanes pushed in. Um, we theoretically could try to push, but it's just not worth it since I don't have like BKB or Satanic or Heart or like some item that either sustains or keeps me alive. So what's so nice about this is that they're respawning on all of their heroes and I can farm the safest farm and just take it from them. For them, it's the safest farm, this area, generally speaking. So I'm gonna farm backwards, and I also have wards to know that if one of them tries to go for this farm, I can get them, right? So this is such good farm to take in these type of scenarios. I see Void leave his base, and a free duel win. So it may seem like we're just getting kills and then farming, but notice how, I assure you from them, they're like, I, I, they never know where the Legion is. They never know. When they're alive, they never know where I am. And they're just trying to sneak back out on the map. And we're just like, no, no, no. Back in your place, sir. Back in your place. And these are the type of things that just kind of drive the nail in the coffin, you know. So I am going to go back to base to sell my phase boots and get a BKB. I love Defiant Shell, especially when I have an Echo Saber. And going towards my team, I just wanted to be full health, full mana. Out on the map with my timing, BKB. So my Treant's going to find an Invoker here. And that's why the Boots of Travel come in huge, huge dividends here. And we get another dual win. When you have heroes like Tree, Bounty Hunter, Boots of Travel go up in value a lot. You have some support that's going to scout for you. 
and you want to be able to connect to them right away because most people on the enemy team are going to show themselves on creep waves to farm or like that's when they'll show themselves and so if you have somebody that's scouting them out and will set up the kill for you boots of travel go way up in value so if i didn't have a hero like that um i'd be less likely to go boots of travel so we give meepo the aegis i'm doing the same thing here where i have a ward to play off of so I want to try to make use of it and my team in the enemy knows that we were just bottom. So it's like all this information that is benefiting me here. So notice how I'm not even showing on the wave. I'm like, oh, this witch doctor, little sneaky devil here. And he's going to die. So if you're a support in that situation, I'd say it's pretty impossible to avoid that death. But you might do, okay, a spoiler alert. You may ask yourself right now, what should witch doctor do there like if i'm the witch doctor I'm, i feel like they have wards in this area bsj i feel like i need to deward it well i promise you that answer is going to come later okay so i showed top my team's taking a fight in their triangle i'm not too concerned because meepo has aegis i'm doing the whole reach around thing little sneaky sneaky freaky deaky and as you can see we do a shit ton of damage so they die So, once again, it's my job to not let them leave base. Poor Witch Doctor. My man. My man. And so we're going to fast forward a bit as we take a lane of Rax because Legion does absurd damage when she has creeps to, that are hitting her. And we're going to back off here. For me personally, I wanted to maybe kill this Void. It would have been better if my Silver Edge was already up. I would have been able to confidently scout. This is something where, you know, in this case, just get off the map void. We don't want you farming. You know, that's the only way they ever come back is if they're farming. And we still have Aegis, so we can take the time to, like, advance back on the map. We have a minute and a half on the Aegis. So, like, TPing bottom there and just saying, void, get out of here. You're not allowed to farm. And then immediately going back to what we were doing. Notice how I'm purposely not showing on the wave again, right? And boom. This is where... We ask, you know, what do you do if you're the Witch Doctor? You can read my move, guys. Look at this. They smoked. I gotta give props. Whoever on Dire made this call, props to you. Like, in hindsight, this Invoker is 100% baiting. Because his whole team is smoked behind him. So, props to you guys. If you're the Witch Doctor there, you could make a sick freaking call earlier. To say, hey guys, Legion's been on my ass all game. It's really hard for me to deward this. Sit behind me. He's going to go on me. You know, I did it. So your 4K Legions will 100% do it. Okay. We've been feeding off of you for dual damage all game. So really nice play by the Dire here, to be honest. Uh, I'm, I was pretty impressed when it happened. So kudos to my, you know, my viewers uh, that made that gank happen. Whoever made that call. You know, sadly, they are just going to end up losing racks and the game kind of ends from here but that was kind of the highlight of the game for dire right there um we do end up getting megas shortly after and we close out the game but you know i feel like the highlight of this game for me was the information battle and how often i feel like i, I could just read what the opponent was doing and they didn't think about what i was going to do so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh if you did please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time